Cambodia and what a history it's had. It's well known and well documented that Cambodia has an upsetting and interesting history, recent history. Okay, hello, my name is Paul and welcome to another English podcast with Paul. Hello. Okay, so if you're in the car, focus and concentrate, but turn up the sound. If you're uh, busy doing stuff outside, put on your headphones, put in your earbuds, earpods. And if you're um, in the house, then just crank up the uh, crank up the stereo. Right, here we go. Let's jump in and dive straight in. Cambodia. Well, let's start with the history first of all. The history of Cambodia. Many of you may already know about the history with Pol Pots and the genocide, the horrific things that happened, and I think it's called S2, S2, the, the school, um, and also there are lots of other areas that, that uh, genocide happened, not, not just the school. It's a very upsetting and, and, and traumatic history. There is currently a leader in place and the country seems pretty stable. And I can say that because I've, I've been there for two years. Uh, one year prior to the pandemic and then one year after the pandemic. One year in Phnom Penh, the capital city, and one year in Siem Reap. So, and I literally just come back from that like a month ago from being there for a year. So the country is stable, the people are relatively happy, and the country seems to be quite a positive and, and happy place in, in regards that there's festivals still happening, the money still seems to be coming in. Obviously, during the pandemic, things went dead quiet, like, like all tourist destinations. Siem Reap, one of the, the second main city of, of um, Cambodia, did suffer heavily because tourism is its main industry. So and that was very unfortunate, as, as for many other countries and other tourist destinations. Okay, why I was there is education. I was teaching English, uh, my wife was teaching English, uh, and we really enjoyed it. We, we had a good time. <laughs> Some of the, the differences in, in employment and culture for, for being employed is um, very interesting, very interesting and different. Right, but we'll get onto that in a moment. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about money. Okay, so money is a big thing for everybody. So generally in Cambodia, if it's over, say, sort of five to ten dollars, like twenty dollars, thirty dollars, anything like that, the bigger numbers, that generally gets conducted in US dollars. US dollars. And let me tell you straight away that they do not like any marks or any dirt or, 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 or abrasions or anything on a dollar. They, they are super paranoid. If you have a dollar with a tiny little nick in the top or writing on it, they won't take it. And then, and then you've struggled to, to get rid of it. One of the things we did was we, we um, went to Wing. So it's kind of like a provincial bank. It's kind of like a bank, but not a bank, you know. So you can go there, you can change up your dollars for Khmer Real. R-I-E-L, Khmer Real. There's a really good YouTube channel as well called um, The Real Cambodia. A couple of Australians, really nice. So shout out to them. The, the real is very low currency, so you, you get some really big denominations. I've, I've done another video about it on, on the other channel, and I'll, I'll link it in the description. Remind me, just put a message in the bottom. So real is very low currency, and children use it more for sweets. Uh, it gets used for food, and, and like I said, for stuff that's below sort of $10, generally is real. And the same from the cash machine. If you get cash out, if it's over sort of... Um, ten dollars it, it'll be in in US dollars and then below that you can get in real which is a little bit confusing we my wife had a bank account because she was working for a, a big school out there and they insisted so that took a little bit of paper a little bit of organizing to do but if you go if you go to 
a visa or tourism place first, they can help you with the paperwork, they can help you organize um, a letter if necessary, and things like that to, to help get it pushed through. They obviously can do visas as well. The, the one we went to in Siem Reap that was really good. Their English was very good. They explained the situation and they tell you what your options are. So whether you want to pay a bit extra for a pre-written letter um, from them or whether you want to go back to your school and ask for the letter to be done again because often they'll, they'll pick up on the slightest thing that's not quite right whether there's a signature missing or a date that's wrong or a stamp or something like that it will get refused so most of the time it's worth paying a little bit extra like 10 or 20 dollars to get that letter sent and to be able to get your bank account in uh, as quickly and easy as possible having the bank account helped a lot because especially in Siem Reap, many people prefer um, ABA. So you get an app on your phone and you just tap it to the QR code, or, or sorry, you don't tap it. You, you click on the QR code, you put in your price of what your coffee was or, or whatever your purchase was, and it takes it straight from your account. There has been known that it can be a little bit glitchy, especially in big supermarket. We, we, uh, we didn't get that, that issue, but we heard of uh, a few people being charged twice or three times and then it's hard to get your money back. People in Cambodia don't seem to want to give money back. It's a lot less transparent, shall we say. So, so yeah, there's no coins, it's just paper money. There's, like I said, there's the reel and there's lots of different reels um, and I'll go over that in another video, like I said. And then there's a, a, um, American dollar. That's kind of all they accept. That's all they accept. So, so there's lots of that there. Um, and it's pretty easy, like I say, if you use the cash machine. I think I got charged a non-sterling transaction fee um, of about, I don't know, 50 cents, maybe a dollar from my own bank. And then there was the, the exchange rate. And then on top of that, there was the ATM fee because it was from somewhere else. So the exchange rate was pretty good for me at the time in Cambodia. And then the, the $5 expense to get out of the machine is a pain in the ass, but it's one of those things you kind of just have to get used to it and suck it up. And it seemed like virtually every single machine we went to was about $5. Some were a little bit more, so it's worth checking, shopping around, but it's safer to go straight to the bank. And we felt, talking of money and, and, and cash machines, some people get very nervous. It was very, very safe using the cash machines and using uh, the bank and coming out of the bank with, with money, um, especially in real, you'd have big wads of real if you came out of a wing. Uh, and so the wing is the green and white. It's kind of like a bank, but not a bank. Like, like I said, one of those in-between things. And with that, you can change your money up. You can, they have an app as well. So you can put money on your app. You can pay your um, drivers with it. You can pay, what, what can you pay? You can pay for food delivery. A lot of food deliveries in, in Siem Reap, especially, uh, sorry, in Cambodia, especially in Siem Reap. Lots and lots of food deliveries and they all prefer, you can even give a tip, the, the app Wing. So it's, it's really good, or ABA. But, but Wing is really popular because you don't have to go through all the rigmarole of, of getting a letter from your employer, showing um, um, a, a visa, and a work visa and all these things. You can just show your passport, they'll give it to you on your phone number, so get a Cambodian SIM. We got one with a really good deal with lots of internet. So we were able to work from our laptops and use a lot of data. And I mean like, I think it was like 150 gigabytes of data. It was really good. Um, and I think the price was something like $15, something like that. It's worthwhile as well getting two SIMs if you can. Two different, there's, there's two big um, phone companies in Cambodia really. But uh, it, I didn't do that because I had the local Wi-Fi in my apartment, which was terrible to be honest. It was terrible, the local Wi-Fi. The, the land would say, would say, yeah, 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 Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, good, it's good. I, I. But he didn't really understand the whole concept of, of bandwidth. So every time a new tenant came and a new extension to the Wi-Fi router, so the bandwidth got squeezed and squeezed, but uh, he, he didn't quite understand that. As far as he knew, he, he put in a new box and somebody come and put an extension onto that original box or a repeater. So education, we'll come on to that in a moment. So, so that was money. 
Money is very simple, very easy, and it's very, very safe in Cambodia. They'll, tuk-tuk drivers will tell you, keep your bags inside. Don't, don't have your phone outside the tuk-tuk or, or purses because there has been a few um, bag snatches. And keep an eye on your rucksacks when you're sat down outside, things like that, because they can disappear if you don't keep an eye on them. Other than that, which is normal travel safety, is really, really safe. We, we've been down some lots of, well, we've been down a lot of dark alleys looking for places on our phone because obviously in, in many places, um, because of the pandemic, things have shut down. You know, businesses was here and now the business is gone. So that's quite common. You'll end up going down a path, going to find somewhere and it's gone. In, in Cambodia, the turnover of businesses is quite quick. You, you might see a business there one week and then a month later it's gone. Like, oh, what, what happened there then? So that's something to be aware of. Like I said before, vegan food is very easy to get as well. Uh, is it more expensive? Coming back to money is more expensive, but it's, it's not too hard. It's not too hard. You can get some vegan foods. There are lots of vegetarian restaurants and even a few vegan restaurants. Uh, again, get a little bit more pricey. Okay, so that's money. Moving on to transport. Okay, so transport. Um, after after probably a, a couple of weeks, I got a motorcycle. I got, um, what did I get? A little step through scooter, which is what everybody else had. And I thought that was pretty good. That's pretty good. I think it was a, a Dallium City 100, a bit like the Honda, the Honda Cub, very similar to the Honda Cub, because they, they go on forever and all the, all the street corners have a mechanic that can fix it really cheaply. I got a few repairs done and it was, I think I had a clutch cable change, not a clutch, a, anyway, I had a, cha a cable change um, and I had a few other bits and pieces and an oil change and I think, it, and oh, a lever, a lever was broken and it all come to less than $15 and I was, wow, I was really surprised at that. So labor is very, very cheap. Labor for anything is very, very cheap. Um, I did get stung with one thing. I asked for uh, fly screen. That's the word, fly screen or mosquito screen. Um, and I showed my, my landlord that, uh, on YouTube. I think it was like on Amazon, something like that. And so he ordered it. And I come back one day and the man was nearly finished. And he gave me a bill for $300. And I was like, what, what? And I, well, I, I disputed it with the landlord. Because what I showed him was a net. That, that you hang in front of the door, just um, you know, a net. His English was pretty good. He was actually an English teacher for, for the government, but that's another story. So yeah, I, I thought, well, I'm, you know, I've got a white face. They, they call us barangs and they're often trying to um, get more money than, than they would locally for another local person. So that was to be expected, but uh, I, I wouldn't pay that. We were able later to get for my wife's apartment next door, uh, the material nets from Alibaba and that was a bit of a, a song and dance getting that delivered so because delivery dresses are very difficult and you, you can't get something direct from Amazon Amazon doesn't, doesn't really come to Cambodia so you have to go through a third party then you have to go to their delivery part uh, their delivery office and then either get them to come to you because the addresses aren't very easy for for us Westerners to read and understand or or even regurgitate so that's another crazy thing but we, we did get a net and I think it was something like three or four dollars um, and, and so that's nowhere near four hundred dollars where they tried to build some big doors uh, in front of my original door I don't understand lost in translation shall we say lost in translation oh right okay to transport so I got a motorcycle the other alternatives is a tuk-tuk and I'll tell you now, make sure you agree a price before you get into the tuk-tuk. Because if you get there, the price will be maybe twice or three times as much if you don't pre-arrange it. Pre-arrange it before you get in the tuk-tuk. And I've argued and walked away. And then before I get three yards down the road, they're like, oh, okay, 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 come back, come back, come back. Uh, and so they know that it, it's a game. Uh, talking of games, we'll, we'll get on to another one in a minute. Uh, and then pass app is, is the easy. If you don't like haggling, pass app is the easiest. It's smaller than a tuk-tuk. Ideal just for two Westerners, really. 
and the Pass app is just an app on your phone. You put in where you are, or it picks up where you are and where you want to go. It gives you a price, and then somebody, some one of the Pass app drivers will say, yeah, I'll do the job, and then they come. And you check you got their number on your Pass app. It's the number of the person that's turned up, all right? Because otherwise, other people will be touting for your business and trying to get you to get in their, their Pass app. So the app is really good, especially if you don't want any hassle. But I will say now, again, coming back to education, <laughs> I will say now that many tuk-tuk drivers and many pass app drivers cannot read a map and they don't always know where they're going. So they'll say, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. And they'll get down the road or they go to a completely different place. And you'll be like, oh, oh dear, oh dear. So it's good to have your phone with you. So, so if, if there's two of you, um, have your Google Maps out and then guide the, the tuk-tuk driver uh, where you need to go because often they don't know where they're going or they can't read a map because somebody else is using their tuk-tuk. Somebody else is using their, their, their pass app and you're like, oh, okay. You know, so I think, the, I think two or three people use the same tuk-tuk or pass app. Uh, so, so again, that's another thing about education which we'll come back to. Right, transport. Uh, and then obviously if you've got a lot of money, you can you can have a, a private taxi and things like that or minibuses. Transport. Um, also, there is no real train system. There's a little train that goes from Phnom Penh to the airport. Uh, it was free when we first went on it, just for fun. But other than that, everything else is done by large coach. You can do an overnight coach, um, overnight bus or the day bus. Personally, so Sue and I felt safer buckling up and having the day coach when the guy was fresh because they're on Red Bull and whatever um, things to keep themselves awake and it's a bit of a crazy ride. They'll, they'll be on the horn quite a lot and, and overtaking because most of the roads are single track roads. There are some dual carriageways and I think they're improving the roads to make them but there's again coming back to education there's not a lot of road sense. So you'll, you'll get grandmother on a motorbike. Uh, you'll get four or five people on, on a, one motorbike, you know, and they're swerving in and out and they, they don't really have a lot of road sense, to be fair. But generally, the bigger vehicle has to give way and should be careful towards the smaller vehicle or the individual, pass, or the individual uh, pedestrian. So we felt quite safe walking along the roads because there's virtually no pavements or if there is, it's full up with... Um, goods from, from the shop that's selling them. So pavements aren't really a big thing in, in Phnom Penh or in Siem Reap. So you're forced to walk in the road. And that's because most people don't walk. Most local people don't walk in, in Cambodia. It's just far too hot, far too hot. If you're walking, then they think you're a bit odd. Get in the tuk-tuk, you got a breeze. And, and that's your choice. We found, depending on what time of year it is, it's nice to get some exercise. But most people don't walk. Occasionally you'll see the children or poor, poorer people cycling, but generally everybody goes via pass up, tuk tuk, or their own moto. So like I said, I had my own motorcycle. So coaches are the biggest thing to get around. And that's the problem when, when you're stuck in one area, you have to keep getting a coach. And don't get me wrong, coaches are cheap. They can be a little bit noisy. They can be a little bit crowded. But coaches are the cheapest and easiest way to get around from one town to the next. But like I said, <laughs> road education is, is not a big thing. But uh, I will get back to the education part again, especially when it comes to licenses. Right, moving on. Culture. Culture. Now, culture, as you know, is different everywhere. And culture is also a little bit... Um, personal to, to you, what you perceive to be their culture, what, what I might perceive to be just regular, normal behavior. So one thing we noticed about culture, and you may notice, notice? You may notice different things about culture that, that we noticed, but a few of the things we noticed differently about the culture was they eat a lot of rice. So like four or five times a day, they'll be eating rice. Obviously, this is Asia, so so you know you, that that's normal for for Asian. But whereas we would probably have two or three meals, they would be eating four or five meals. So that, oh, okay, and rice comes with everything. Even if you go to KFC, rice is with KFC, and so rice 
is something they're addicted to and they eat a lot of rice. Which, okay, rice is good because with the older generation, it keeps the it keeps people slim. You know, you, you eat rice and vegetables, you eat rice and um, dumplings or rice and a little bit of meat and rice and sauce and rice and, you know, so and rice and fish, which is a big dish actually. Um, we had tofu amok, which is really nice, really nice. But that's their, their culinary dish is rice, which, which is, you know, you'd expect that. But we just didn't expect it to be five times a day. And often they'll sit on the floor. Um, and when you go out to, say, a, a celebration in town, they'll have a, a picnic blanket down and they'll sit on the floor. And the whole family will sit around that and they'll share stuff, which is, you know, normal for Asia. What else do we notice about culture? Um, oh, there's so many things. It's really difficult to pin it down to, to one or two things. Sitting down on the floor, make, making do. So obviously Cambodia is a poor country and the income generally is quite low for your average family. So when you see them mending and making do, they are very, very resourceful. They can fix all sorts of stuff, anything. They can fix it, but to a lower degree. So going back to education again, if you get your motorbike fixed, you need to keep an eye on it and watch it. Watch exactly what's going on all the time. Because there are rumours, and I believe the rumours, that if you're not watching, then many of the genuine parts will be removed. And cheaper, um, less less sturdy parts will be will put in instead. So it'll be fine for the first few weeks or few months and then all sorts can happen because you don't have the genuine parts, you don't have good quality parts and they may be doing something else with those other parts. <laughs> but they're able to mend certain, uh, almost everything, you know, with a bit of tape, a bit of bamboo, a bit of wire, a bit of welding that they can seem to fix most everything. So, <laughs> Uh, so if you're getting any welding done, make sure you unplug the battery because often the Cambodian won't because of education. They don't know about the ECU. They don't know what welding can do. They just know it, it puts metal together. Like I said, education. Right. So there's lots more things about culture that there's very different. <laughs> so one thing is like, like, like if you go down a one-way street, like I said, coming back to education, the police will stop you and fine you. Or if you're not wearing a helmet, the police will stop you and fine you. Most people will stop and pay the fine. Whereas the locals, they'll zoom around and try and get past the policeman. Or they'll turn around and go back the other way. And they'll do everything they can to avoid the police. They don't want to stop. They're, they're not stopping. And, and you'll see them carrying like windscreens on the back of a motorcycle, like, like this big, like really big. And they'll carry all sorts on the back of a motorcycle. So health and safety, oh my God, there is like no health and safety. Occasionally you will see somebody wearing a hard hat instead of a motorcycle helmet whilst on the back. Because their law states you've got to wear a helmet or a hat. So they'll have all sorts of uh, hard hats and other types of helmets instead of a real motorcycle helmet. Oh dear. Um, so, so health and safety. Occasionally, you will see a professional building site with real metal scaffolding and harass fencing around it and a guard. So, so occasionally, but generally there is bamboo scaffolding, there's people walking around in flip-flops, there's women shoveling the, the cement and using the cement mixer, again just in flip-flops and, and, and a, uh, a soft hat to keep the sun off. Some things are, are, are really shocking, uh, but, but you get used to it, you understand that's their way. And then they accept that occasionally there's an accident and somebody loses a leg, somebody loses an arm, People die, it, it, it seems like life is cheap out here. Um, I come across a, a road traffic accident and, and I, was, I was quite upset actually to see it. But um, I knew uh, from, from other locals saying that if you're a white face and you're near an accident, go away quick. Because otherwise somebody will accuse you of the accident and they'll try and get you to pay for it and they'll get the police there and things like that and they'll all get out of hand. So if you're in Asia and there's an accident that's not your fault, get away quick, disappear, because somebody will try and blame you. And, and that's not to say they're bad people, they're beautiful people, amazing people, generous people, really, really good. But if there's somewhere money to be made, then they know you've got a white face and that you're more likely to have money and they will try to get money out of you. So 
like I said, they're beautiful, generous, amazing people. Just stay away from anything to do with money. Right, okay, so yeah, culture is, is amazing culture, it's really good. They have their own music, their own dancing, um, their own radio stations and, and, and TV shows. A lot of the TV is very poor quality with the antenna and the signal. So often we found that the, in the rooms that we had, the TV was very bad. Occasionally you get a few good shows from Australia, maybe from Japan uh, and sometimes from China, but generally the TV is not worth watching. TV is not a huge deal in, in, in Cambodia specifically. And I don't think it is in Asia. I don't think people watch a lot of TV like we do here in the West. Okay, so that's one thing about culture. All right, markets. So most locals go to a local market. You can haggle a little bit, uh, normally sort of 20% within the price. Some places really like it. Some markets you don't need to haggle at all. It's just the, the average price for, or the same price rather, for the same thing all around the market. You might come across five people selling veg or six people selling veg, and it'll be virtually the same price. So we really enjoyed the market. We found a market that was dry, a dry underfoot. So it, it wasn't a wet market. And now it was really, really good. The prices were so much cheaper and you can get a lot of things in the market. And going back to the culture, you would, you would find lots of things being sold uh, in the market. So there could be a motorcycle mechanic next to a veg shop, next to a flower shop, next to a jewelry shop, next to a shoe shop, next to meat being sold, next to somebody, uh, a hairdresser shop. Uh, it, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Some, some really good photo opportunities, I must say. Okay, so that's the markets. Technology. Okay, technology, they have mobile phones, they have smartphones, and they have good connectivity. But technology is more expensive in Cambodia because it's brought in and they don't really understand it. Working in the schools, we got photocopying done. And even with the photocopying, you'd have to explain everything to every new person really, really well again and watch what happens because often they'll leave it, they'll go for a break, somebody will move something and you'll come back with 30 sheets of your paper and half of it will be wrong or back to front or upside down or pages missing. So with technology, it comes back to education. Unless you know that it's a Western person, then the education is very, very different. That moves, so, so like I said, they have mobile phones, they have um, TVs. I seen some radios, not a lot of radios, more, more out in the, in the villages. Um, electric is everywhere. The electric will trip, um, even if it's uh, maybe the whole block, electric gets cut out quite regularly. Sometimes it can be two or three times a day for just five minutes, sometimes half an hour. So keep your gadgets charged up. Um, and laptops, we had to buy a laptop while we were there. And again, it's more expensive. So I paid just under $400 for um, an i5 laptop. Was It's not slow, but it's not super quick either. It, it works for now. It had a, a terabyte of uh, hard drive. And I think it's got something like uh, 128 megabytes of RAM. And like I said, nearly $400. So it is what I could get at the time. I, I did my due diligence and I, I went around lots of different shops uh, and, and bartered and argued. And we settled on one shop in the end. But I did literally go to five or six or, or seven different shops. Uh, and that was the best price I could get. So technology is there but it's expensive um, and again it comes down to education. I had t-shirts printed for example but that was through a westerner uh, and the spelling was correct, the, this, uh, the printing was beautiful um, and there are lots of western businesses there. So I don't, I don't say take business away from Cambodians but if you need something specifically done correctly it might be worth going to a Westerner. I had some artwork printed uh, from an art shop. And again, that was run by Westerners. Both shops actually were run by um, Austrians. So it must be. And, and the caf cafe and good coffee shop come from an Austrian. So maybe there's a link there. You tell me. Put a mention down in the comments. Okay, right. I got to be a bit quicker. So that was 
technology. Education. So education is very limited. They, they have a state school education, but most people prefer to push it over to private education where, where they pay. But with the problem with that is it's still very low quality. Um, if the families don't like don't like the teacher, they'll they'll complain and they'll get the, the either the teacher removed or they'll take the child out and go to another school because there's a plentiful supply of schools and a plentiful supply of teachers. So so you are just a number, you're just a bum on a seat with your white face keeping them happy. <laughs> Until they find somewhere better, then then many students will get shuffled and moved around. Many students will get moved up a level even if their English is deteriorating because they've paid. And so you might have an exam at the end of the session, a speaking exam and a writing exam, but it's all arbitrary. Regardless of whether you think they passed or failed, they will go up to the next class if the, if the uh, family want them to because they pay their money. So you'll get a lot of people finishing education at 15 or 16 years old and a lot of the basics they, they don't have. Because often when people were covering the basics, the, the, the uh, foundations of, of English, like the vowels and the alphabet and, and building the vocabulary and sentence structure, maybe that student was off sick. Maybe that student was on holiday to see grandma in, in the province. Maybe that student went with somebody else to the hospital in, in Vietnam or Thailand. But many, many students have a lot of gaps in their education and, their, and, um, and in their knowledge. So time they're 15, 16, they may go on to college, they may go on to further education, but they have a lot of gaps in their understanding and knowledge. Uh, and that's normal for Cambodia, that is normal. So like I said, the education system is, is very flawed. Again, it comes down to money and it comes down to preferred choice. So most people in Cambodia uh, are employed in, in a shop or in tourism where you only have to be able to speak English uh, to, to a low level, sort of eight, nine year old level of English. Anything other than that, then you, you have to try and find a Westerner. And that's the same throughout, edu throughout Cambodia and throughout the education system. Uh, even when it comes to roads, like I said, um, the, the, there's not awareness throughout the whole country. So part of the history goes back to where grandma is still alive and grandma might be paying because grandma might, uh, and I mean this with all due respect, come out of the jungle sooner than other families and may stay to, stake the claim to a house or a few houses because hers might have been bombed or torn down. So they made stake claimed stakes uh, to property or houses or, or other buildings and so maybe a little bit more financially because the education is very young because mo lots of the the, the, um, the genocide killed a lot of the grandparents off and a lot of the parents off. Like I said it was in the late 80s, uh, early 90s so many grandparents aren't around and in that way those grandparents that are around do have a lot of money and a lot, a lot of say within what happens in the household. So often I've had students at the back of the class going like this, trying their hardest to see the board and they can't see it. But grandma will not let them have glasses because glasses were a sign of intelligence. And in the era of Pol Pot's Many educated people with glasses or tutors or teachers were, were, um, were, were killed. Simple as that. So, so often grandma would not allow the children to have glasses. Unfortunately, that is, that is, that is uh, a thing that is, that, that, that you have to deal with. Um, but it's slowly, it's slowly um, dying out. You know, people are slowly trying to get better educated, especially with the advances of the internet. All right, the internet is pushing uh, a lot more of Western TV, Western, Western ideology, and lots of people in, in Asia are wanting to emulate what they see in the West. So, so that is a good thing. But like I said earlier in regard to education, um, permeating many aspects of Cambodian life, even driving, you can go to some people and you can buy a driving license. 
you can buy a license for all sorts of things. If you have the, enough money, you can just go and buy it. So you can have a big four by four car. You could have never driven in your life. You could be a 16 year old girl or an 18 year old girl and your father or somebody else will just go and pay for a license. And there you go, you have a license to drive it around and you might get shown it, you might learn as you go. Often um, indicators are, are, are not known. So the person in front of you basically has right of way. So if they suddenly stop and turn left, that's up to them. But you have to be aware of not to go into anybody else, especially somebody on a, a smaller piece of transport, whether it's a motorcycle or a bicycle or on foot. So you're responsible for, for whatever you're driving and for the smaller person in front of you. Most people drive pretty slowly. Occasionally you get youngsters going crazy, you know, rebellious and fast. Uh, those are the ones you've got to look out for. But generally, 90% of people are driving slowly, sort of 15, 20 miles an hour. Often you'll see a baby in one arm and, and, and a woman uh, riding a motorcycle because you've got the brakes on, on one side. So you'll see babies in arms quite often. So 15 miles an hour to 20 is, is average. Slow progress, yes, because of corruption, it does slow down the progress, um, like I said, with education, that, that permeates the whole of the culture, the whole of the, um, all industries, which is a shame, which is a shame. Okay, but looking at the positives, we do have a bit of an eco dilemma. There is car charging. You can car charge your electric car in, in Siem Reap and in Phnom Penh in, in various places. I'm sure you can Google it and find somewhere. Google is really helping uh, and the Cambodian people, the young people are really jumping on with it and really taking it the next step. So electric car charging, um, ecological diversity. So you will see some recycling facilities, you will see some recycling paper. Some people, especially if there's been an influence from the West, like, like in cafes and restaurants, you'll see some recycling going on and, and even some grassroots projects to, to help trades people sell at, at trade shows where, where lots of Westerners are invited to come along or, or uh, Asian people with more money. So, so that is good initiatives by the Cambodians. Another good in initiative uh, is going on to the ASEAN, A-S-E-A-N. So this is a partnership for, for Asia. Uh, and so you have the Asian Games, a bit like the Olympic Games, I guess. So the Asian, ASEAN Games. Uh, and also there's the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, also known as the RCEP. So like... Um, Australia, China, Cambodia, Japan, Hong Kong, um, and a few other countries uh, are come together for a free trade agreement and building relationships together. Um, also, China has, has helped a lot in regards to building Cambodia and, and investing in Cambodia, especially in bridges and some infrastructure. I'm pretty sure that Cambodia gets their electric from China. So, there is a, a lot of partnerships going on. Some may say that it is a little bit negative uh, and there's a bit of a bad side to that, especially in places like Sunukville, but that's another story altogether. So there, Cambodia and lots of other parts of Asia are building networks and building relationships um, to, to help with trade and to help with building up and bringing up the rest of the other countries. So that's a really big positive. And there's a really big building boom going on in Cambodia, partly funded by um, China and, and also Singapore. Um, that really, really helps, again, lift up the country, the big building boom. Also helped on with tourism. Tourism is a real big factor in Cambodia, especially in places like Siem Reap. The, the, the level of the hostels uh, and uh, the hotels is really, really rising. But don't forget, it is still Cambodia, okay? You still got to be aware for yourself, for your own safety. Because the healthcare system in Cambodia can be good. And we've seen some really good, really good um, hospital. One of my, uh, one of my, well, a person I knew went to hospital and I went with them. Uh, and they had an x-ray and they, and they obviously had the price up front and they had to pay for everything before they even uh, went into the bed. 
but generally onto the bed. Generally, everybody wants to know that you've got money before they'll do anything and they'll need to retain some, some way of paying for that. And so also you have to pay for your own food and aftercare and things like this. I'm sure you can pay for other people. But that seemed to go really well for, for the, this person that, that, that had a, a cracked elbow. Um, and that went really well. But healthcare generally, a lot of locals go abroad. They go to Thailand, they, they fly out. Uh, if you have any burns or accidents, uh, if it's serious, often you'll go um, outside of Cambodia because the education in Cambodia, as I said, it is, is uh, limited. Okay, so healthcare, looking after yourself is very, very important. And I really uh, I must say that having healthcare insurance is a must. Unless you're completely re re reckless and rebellious like myself, then having healthcare is definitely a must. I was lucky and my wife was lucky. We were there for two years and we never had an accident. All right, so we were very lucky. That being said, I recommend having health insurance. You'll see a lot of younger people there because healthcare, uh, not just because young people like Cambodia and like exploring, but healthcare is much cheaper if you're young. When you get into your 50s or late 40s or 50s, like my wife and I, then it sort of skyrockets the uh, um, insurance premiums for, for our age. So that's why I think you see a lot of young people. So healthcare, look after yourself. Right, so a building boom, Asia, conclusion. Moving on to conclusion. Right, like I said, look after yourself, haggle, be aware of prices, be aware of money, and have a great time. Enjoy yourself, um, take in the sights, just relax and know it's, know it's Cambodia. Just, it's, it's normal, it's normal for Cambodia. Anything crazy you see, it's, it's normal for Cambodia. So Cambodia is building up, Cambodia is becoming uh, um, more affluent, it's becoming more uh, aware of technology, the, 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 the young people want to, to, to become more educated and, and want to become more Western, as well as keeping hold of some of their tradition and roots. The, uh, some of the older people in, in, in uh, Cambodia don't want to learn, and they don't want to learn from a, from a Westerner, for sure, because they've got that pride. And sometimes that pride holds them back a little bit, you could show them amazing things and they'd be like, no, 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 we do it our way. <laughs> so that is frustrating. And that comes from my friend that worked in, in a posh restaurant. He, he worked in the kitchen area uh, and, and he was forever trying to show um, more efficient ways of doing things, but it, it fell on deaf ears. So that was frustrating for him. Okay, so in conclusion, Cambodia is a great place. You'll have a great time. It's really, really hot. You're going to get bitten by mosquitoes. The, the rainy season, buy a good poncho. The rainy season comes and it, it pours down all of a sudden and, and then everything stops. Most people stop, except for food delivery. So if you were planning on going out, get on food delivery. You'll get it just quicker. Um, and, and tip your food delivery guy. They rely on tips. Um, Cambodia is a great place, like I said. Go there, you'll enjoy it. It's amazing. So yes, that's my word. That's the end. Thank you very much. That's it for now. Um, you know, check me out on the website, usual stuff. But there we go. English with Paul podcast. All right. Sweet. I'm getting tired now. Speak to you soon. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye bye for now.